Let's talk about fixing your broken windows. To start with, I think I should acknowledge that this is based, or at least was originally based on the broken window policing that was popularized in New York uh, several decades ago. It's worth noting that that has been largely discredited. The causation doesn't actually seem to have been there, but I think the theory still is worth discussing with regards to your approach to video game development. So what is fixing your broken windows? What that refers to is addressing the low hanging fruit and obvious bugs that crop up in the things that people see every day. So if the safe screen looks like garbage, but people are using it all the time as part of their testing routine, it's worthwhile investing the time to tidy that up, make it look done because it's something people are encountering all the time. Or if there's a weird little glitch in the walk animation, it's being seen constantly. It's not breaking the game, the game is still playable, but it's a broken window. So what's a broken window? A broken window is a relatively minor bug that's highly visible and therefore everyone is encountering it all the time. So by focusing on fixing your broken windows, you're focusing on fixing some quick fixes that are highly visible that might not actually be preventing the game from being playable. So why do I like this as a strategy, or at least a strategy you can utilize at certain times in your project? Because these broken window bugs are highly visible to everyone that's playing the game, if you let them be, if you let them just exist in the game, then it's dragging down the overall perception of quality of the game as a whole. And I'm not talking about what executives think or what people off the project think. I'm specifically talking about what the team is seeing day to day, second to second. They're seeing a game that has these obvious, very visible bugs. So the consequence is that it lowers their own personal expectation of what level of quality they need to deliver the stuff that they're working on. If they're seeing a glitchy walk cycle all the time and they're working on animation, then they're gonna say, well, I get, I mean, that's broken. I don't need to finish this. I just need to get it in there. We're just moving stuff forward. We're just making content exist. We're not making it done. Even if you're not working on animation, even if you're working on level art, same thing. You're seeing this broken, glitchy walk animation all the time. So maybe you don't bother to get the light map set up just right. You just sort of throw something in there so it exists, move on. You're checking things off the checklist because what the game is telling you is this is about getting content in, not about getting it done. But you don't want that because in many cases, most cases, almost all cases, the cost of getting something from existing to done is actually usually way higher than the cost of getting it to existing. You don't want people stopping at that first marker. You want them to push further but it's very hard to get them to do that if you're allowing the game to be in this broken, kind of scuzzy, dirty state. So by addressing the most obvious, even if they're not the most egregious bugs, by addressing the ones that are the most obvious, what you're doing is you're elevating the experience of people playing the game moment to moment. So then that starts to change their psychology because if everything around the content they're putting in looks really clean, then they're less likely to be happy putting in something that isn't clean. So it just starts to feed upon itself. If you clean up the broken windows, then you get less broken windows because individual devs are less likely to just check in something that is in a broken state because they don't wanna be the thing that is the ugliest thing in the game. But if you already have a lot of ugly things, they're a lot less likely to care or consider that as part of their check-in process. So if you address your broken windows all the way along throughout your development, then it kind of takes care of itself to some degree, most of the time. But what do you do if you're in a state where you have a lot of broken windows? Because again, these aren't the worst bugs in your project, they're just the most visible ones on your project. 
So it can feel counterintuitive to potentially set aside the fact that your networking code is totally broken or your save game system crashes to address these other things like weird glitchy walk cycles or broken textures on the loading screen. But that's exactly what you have to do. You have to stop trying to make forward progress and instead focus at least for the moment on improving what you already have of fixing up this glitchy gross thing that you've allowed to come into being because doing that is going to elevate the quality of everything that moves forward. So once you get it clean, then you can go back to moving and making forward progress. This is one of the reasons why demos can have such a strong impact on certain teams. You are explicitly putting broken windows first when you're working on a demo. You're choosing aesthetics over functionality. The end result is that you bring the overall quality of the build, or at least a build, way up. And while you're going to get almost immediate bit rot coming out of the other side of that demo, it at the very least can set a target for the team in terms of what done looks like. If you've managed to structure the demo in such a way that it's actually improving the overall quality of the mainline build, all the better because then you've actually fixed a whole bunch of broken windows as a side effect of that demo. Some teams, if they're in a clean state, will stay in a clean state. That they will just naturally want their content to be no worse than the best contents that's in the game. Other teams, it's not going to work that way. What's going to happen is you're going to clean up the mess, then you will start to make forward progress and people will start putting in glitchy stuff and the the overall uh, cleanliness of the build will decline relatively quickly. You'll have to stop again and you'll end up in this sort of sawtooth of, of having to fix your broken windows over and over again. But that's okay, it's still helping. So for me, this is something that can actually be hard to get the team to buy into, but is worth trying to enforce. Fix your broken windows. Don't allow the build to become a messy thing. Don't allow one of your primary test paths to be filled with debug console commands. Don't allow broken animations to just exist for months at a time. Don't allow broken light maps. Don't allow odd math in your, uh, in your combat code. Keep it clean and it will help improve the quality of your game as a whole. But while I love fixing broken windows, while I think this is a great strategy to have in your arsenal, some teams can actually have the opposite problem from ignoring all their broken windows. Some teams can become so obsessed with the cleanliness of the build that they actually make no forward progress, that they're, rather than fixing broken windows, they, they fix them already, and now they're just buffing the window surface in order to make it cleaner and cleaner. And they're not actually putting anything new in the build. This isn't nearly as common as teams that just allow really scrunchy, gross builds to exist, but it can happen. If this is what you're experiencing, then you might actually have to go out with a rock and break a few windows in order to give that team permission to check something in, anything in, just to allow you to make forward progress at all. So like most things, the reality is somewhere in the middle, there's a balance point. Don't become so obsessed with broken windows that you're not actually building architecture or getting systems in place. But honestly, again, in my experience, the problem isn't that. The problem is teams that allow the game to become really scruffy because they're just trying to get so much stuff in all at once and you just have this very feature complete, very broken, gross, unplayable mess. A special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you are interested in becoming a member, there'll be a link down in the description. It would really help the channel out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up because that tells YouTube that it's getting interest and it's worth sharing with other people. What do you think about the broken window strategy towards addressing 
bug cleanliness. I know that in other circles like policing, it's a bit controversial now because it has been largely disproven and also unfortunately has resulted in some pretty racist approaches to policing. Let me know down in the comments. I will see you again soon. Thank you.